President Warner. Yeah. Secretary Treasurer Horowitz. Here. Trustee Pell. Present. Trustee Stafford is ill. Trustee Welker, I'm assuming, is on her way. We have a quorum present, sir. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Um, the first discussion, uh, before we get into it, um, the board would like to sincerely thank uh, Sunday Shermeyer for her help in uh, cleaning out our storage area in Hampton Bays. Uh, there was multiple trips back and forth removing the uh, material so that we could look at it and uh, find the best place to do it, uh, to take care of it. Um, her staff was a great help, Candace and everybody, and the marine maintenance staff also helped, as did Lisa Dunlap, our secretary. So it was a uh, real uh, heavy lift, but it had gotten done, and uh, we can look at our, our material and properly, uh, you know, either dispose of it or maintain it for future generations. Sunday, would you like to come in a little bit of discussion? Hello. Thank you very much for me, too. My pleasure. My pleasure. I think the time had come, honestly, it was overdue, that we, uh, we were able to get in there and, um, and go through. I, my uh, record center, uh, supervisor put together an Excel spreadsheet for you. Hi. Um, of, I'm going to say there's 75 boxes or so on here. Um, many of these boxes could probably have been destroyed 5, 10, 15 years ago. They just were held for lack of an adoption of a records management uh, protocol by your board. So you've taken care of that and you've remedied that, and now we need to get you on track to start exercising and, and practicing uh, good records management policies and procedures going forward so that you don't accumulate things that are not required to be kept any longer. There's only a, a couple of categories that um, need, we need to be aware of and, and you need to be aware of going forward on these particular boxes. We need to just determine if there are any capital um, receipts in any of these boxes because we found out <clears throat> quite some time ago that you need to um, be aware that capital records, uh, the time clock for those types of receipts for projects that you do, that this board takes on, the time clock doesn't start ticking until the last bill is paid and the project uh, budget code is closed. Until that budget code is actually closed, the retention schedule does not is not assigned to those records. So we need to make sure the town had to go through a similar exercise. So we want to make sure that anything related to invoices or projects is carefully gone through before anything is even considered to be disposed. Personnel records also are sensitive because a lot of them must be kept for future retirements, for social security purposes. They want to know the date and time that people start their employ when it comes to retirement. So those are really the only two categories. Much of what's on this list has absolutely nothing to do with either one of those categories. And many uh, boxes are filled with copies of um, letters and records that are actually maintained arch archivally by the department which originally generated them like ZBA letters, et cetera. So we have those somewhere else, and, and they have, um, they're within the town's record system. Um, so this will need to be gone through. But right now, these 75 boxes are sitting over in my record center. So we'd like to try and expedite the review so that we can dispose of what you, because you're going to need to sign off on this, just like we do with all the town departments. You're provided with a disposal list that you need to sign off on, that you're in agreement that they can be disposed of. Um, you have an MU1 schedule. Yes. So, uh, you know, Lisa can go through and highlight the categories that these fall into. Um, we actually contacted New York State um, Archival Division, the Department of Education, on your behalf because a couple of the boxes, uh, several of them, it wasn't clear 
in the MU1 schedule as to how to proceed with them. It's clear that they need to be disposed of, but they needed to um, adjust the language a little bit to make them appropriate um, for your specific records. So New York State is going to do that, actually. They're going to add, add an additional line to accommodate some of the records that you have that are outside of how it's written currently. Um, so that being said, you know, I just wanted to speak briefly to you about the importance of a sound records management system. Adopting a resolution that says you now adopt the MU1 schedule is just a piece of paper, but it's the first step in promoting and going forward with a sound records management program. You have appointed an RMO, records management officer, as you should by law since you're an independent governing body. So you have that in place, but now you have to provide the structure and the resources of how to move forward and manage these records going into the future and not keep things that need to be disposed of and to make sure you do keep the things that are important. Um, so um, that being said, I think that, you know, an important part of what we had to do in straightening out a lot of the town's records was to take a really good look at the retrieval systems that you have in place and how you find records once you have them, how do you store them and index them so that you can actually find them as you need them or your constituents can find them when they're trying to make applications to you. Um, we had to untangle and put back together a couple of the record series that we had because it was nearly impossible for us to find the date that an employee started in the town because people organized records by departments, they organized them by people's last names, they organized them by the year that they worked for the town. It was a, it was a huge mess and we had to take it all apart and put it back together and now it's digital and we can, you know, at the touch of a fingertips on your computers, we can now find that information that was like a needle in the haystack before. And very similarly, like we have, I came in for an application not too long ago and I find it, I found it rather cumbersome to research the information that I needed to provide to you in order to get an application before you because of the different ways that things have been organized along the way. Um, I'm talking about property ownership, whether it's by the person's last name or whether it's tax map or whether it's the address, you know, something along those lines when you have a system and you require that information from the public, um, it's best to try and find a system that makes sense. And whether you initiate it from day forward and then you try and go back and capture it as you can afford to and your staff has time to, to bring those records into the system and have the retrieval be the same. And pick a convention that makes sense, whether it's a tax map number, if it's land related, or you know, determine how you want to retrieve the records and how it makes the most sense. And then you have to implement that and put it in place so that it makes your, the work more efficient in retrieving those records for your staff and for the public so that, you know what I mean, but you have to determine what's the best way, how do you want to manage your records, how do you want to be able to retrieve them, and how does it make the most sense to reduce the amount of resources that are required to, to utilize the records that you have that people need access to. Well, so. I think one of the biggest things our offices come under uh, in the time that I've been here is the FOIL request for, you know, properties and docs <coughs> and, uh, and a lot of the docs, older docs, I'm talking 25, 30, 40, and 50 years old, some of the street addresses have changed, the tax map numbers have changed, and multiple people have changed. So it's very difficult to go back in time to see if a bulkhead was placed and when it was placed or a dock to see if it's actually a legitimate dock. And when you started on your project, you brought it to my attention and that, I think that was really, you know, uh, the uh, driving point on this whole project is to bring this forward. So our records, you can go on, you know, the town portal and just click on and click on trustees to our portal and just, you know, re research at home. It would cut down on the staff hours, which we are, are literally have been drowning in lately on FOIL requests. So, you know, I think this is a wonderful thing for the trustees moving forward. And, and to get rid of some of these old uh, records that aren't, you know, are 
not specifically generated from our office, but from other offices that we have copies of in multiple boxes. I mean, I'm looking at the date, the start date of 1974 here. I mean, that's, you know. A you long know. time to keep something what? you don't need that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a long time ago. I wish it was something interesting in the box, quite well, frankly. But <laughs> we're going to go through each and every box and make sure that uh, you know that there's nothing there that we need for future for you know court cases. Which you know uh, I'm assuming mm -hmm. that if there's a record there that we consider important, we can always you know change it from paper to electronic and make that you know a, a, another whole category as far as the trustees' history. But I, I really want to thank you and the staff and everybody that participated in it because uh, I, I realize, uh, you know, it's being at Uncle Bob's one time, it was just like, you know, you open up the door and it's like there's literally no more room in there. And, and cutting down the cost of paying that every year is, is another uh, burden that we had to maintain too. So moving forward, we're looking to work with you and uh, our staff and your staff to really uh, accomplish this and, and put this to bed for once and for all. So, and thanks. if you know, I could, I would recommend to you that you start um, looking into digitization projects and where they'll be most helpful to you. You don't want to digitize things that have a, a year's retention, but no. if something is kept forever and it's a record of a doc, you know, the GIS department has over time because all these things take time, but you have to start somewhere to to make this work better for you and for the public. And, you know, we, we've all been through it, it, but it has to be done. So if you start day forward and you digitize, we, everybody in my office has a scanner on their desk. Lisa was part of that when she was in the town clerk's office. You know, so as it comes in, if it's supposed to be kept, it gets scanned and then it gets sent out for review. But, um, you know, and then you can go back and back fill. But, you know, you'd be amazed if people start doing it as your applications and things are coming in now. It really, you know, they don't cost that much, no. and it's really mm -hmm. easy just to put it through yes, as it comes large, in. For we, this spe specific yes. purpose, Sunday, we have a large scanner that we now. Well, one yes. of your past staffers that are working in our office, Justin Golaski, has made. I train them well. Made sure that before I uh, before they come to you. As we get to a project, she goes, "We would need this, and this yes. is a piece of equipment, and she'd research it and the cost of it, and then you know, and this is why we're going to do this, and, and and which is is wonderful for us because you know we're doing other stuff, and and the office staff does uh, you know does wonderful uh, things for our office. So, I wanna, but the GIS department too, on. Honestly, you should sit down with them and have a conversation because Ross has done an extraordinary job with the group of people that work upstairs in his office of the generations of properties as they subdivide. Mm -hmm. And they have the history of the parent property and how it's subdivided and how many times. So that might be helpful when you're identifying these permits of the docks and such to tap into that resource because if you can help that, then, then you can make that part of your program. Yeah to, to yeah. find some of these properties that you're talking about. And once you label them and you have them in your system, you know, and identify them, then you just move on to the next ones. And if you do them as they come in, as the applications come in, like one like mine, and you go, oh, okay, well, now we found that here's the history of this, and you put it together and you enter it into your system so that the next time if somebody else were to buy this house and come back to, to fix something, you could just look that up and have it, whether it's the names of the people or whatever it is. You, they've established the history for you, and you should take advantage of that history yes. when it's given to you, and then turn it into the, the convention that you want to retrieve it in the future. So, you know, the day forward thing, it's really important, and it'll save you some time and effort to get to where you need to go because you've got a ways, yes, ways to go and it's well, painful but I once think you get moving there, forward we're, we're in a good place it's going backwards in time that's going to be the challenge you know we've and, come and, a long way yep you have. We really no, have come a long way. And, and Uncle Bob's, I opened that door. It was like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and I was afraid to stand on one side of it because, uh, you know, it was um, above my head. I, I, do, so. I do have one quick question for you yes. about the capital projects. I know when I first was a trustee, the capital projects were bid out at your office, and you had copies of everything there. There have been a couple projects that we've done uh, lately that more so in our office so all of that material i think should be in our office and the town also should have con uh, uh, copies of those contracts and stuff i'm also researching quickbooks candace and i had a conversation this morning on this topic and mm -hmm. i think quickbooks which is the, the financial system that the trustees used prior to mm -hmm. joining with the comptroller 
I think that may have a key to some of this information as well. Okay. But that's going to take some research. Sonny, do you recall what the time is from the last uh, bill being paid? How many years? Retention? It depends on what type of project it yes. is. It's, like five it's all in the MU1 schedule. Yeah, You're yeah. going to have to study that a little bit to familiarize yourself, honestly, so that you understand it a little bit. It's a very long document. You don't have to read it ver you know, word for word. But you have to kind of take a look at the structure as to what you're up against. You know, there's a lot of information contained in that, and it's a lot of work. And honestly, there's a lot of training available. I sent some links to Lisa. You mm -hmm. can do some online um, group sessions that they'll they'll take you through records management 101 right to, to the other side. And I suggest that anybody who <laughs> is providing support to Lisa as the RMO should also be taking those courses. They're free. They're from the state. And they, you know, hit the topics that you need to know to be able to, to make a decision. Because unless you're sure you're afraid to, to put the first piece of paper in the shredder, you have to be confident that you are complying with all the regulate regulations from New York State and that, you know, you are getting rid of something that you should be keeping. That's got to go into the standard framework protocol of the Office of the Trustees. Because, you know, the board members change from time to time but the, the framework of how things are done you know records it's, management is the foundation of the it's, government exactly it's got to be 100 so percent of the time you need to get it right exactly you can't well it's extremely it important well, way for us for our lawsuits just looking at the length of the time that we take on each lawsuit we just won the brookhaven bayman's case and some of this information that is in here w is very pertinent in that case it's a 10 year plus you know case so you know some of the records the state might say we only need to keep them for three years, but in some cases we might need to look at it on our end a little bit different. But you have that ability at yes. any time to decide that you need to keep records beyond the retention schedule. You yep. always have that ability yep. because if there's a lawsuit immediately, it comes from upstairs. Any records that you have pertaining to X. Mm -hmm. Y or Z must be kept because we need them beyond. And that's why we send out the disposition list for people to sign off on because we're not aware of what's going on internally in every department. Those departments need to tell us. We need to keep these yep. for whatever reason and then we just put them back in records management and store them until such time as they come up again. But um, it's just important that you plan as you move forward with your budgetary issues and, and discussions that you plan to provide yourself with some resources to support this records management yes. system or it will not succeed no, it's, unless it's supported by this board yeah. and given resources it, it has to, to survive. It needs to succeed. You know, it's I have to tell you, being the records management officer for the town of Southampton is, a, is pretty much, it's most often a bigger job than being the town clerk and providing all those other um, services yes, yeah. that I do. So. You know, I have 35 plus departments that we manage archives for, but you know, it's an important job. And you know, with contracts or whatever it is, that you need to know where they are when you need to find them. Yep. So, well, anyway. Great job, Sunday. Thank you so much. Thank you, you know, thank you very much. My pleasure. And uh, do great things when we all work together. You know, thank you. Look forward to. <clears throat> thank you, Sunday. Martha, we have a discussion about the. Uh, Yes. Working group. So Can you all have in front of you, Lisa um, gave you a copy of the town board resolution that was passed yesterday regarding the formation of a working group for the budget. Um, I've prepared a sister resolution, which I can hand out to the board right now. They have this, right? No, that's well, that's, the, town that's the town one. The, oh, okay. the sister one oh, you got is sister. essentially exactly the same, but it's the trustees' resolution. Hmm. Well, um, if it's acceptable to the board, then we'll put on it at the next meeting on Monday. But I just wanted to run it past the board first to make sure that um Do you have another copy of that? Oh, sorry. Here you go. Just to see if the board had any questions, any changes they want. Um, otherwise it'll it'll move forward for Monday's meeting. Thanks, Martha. So the proposed uh, members are Supervisor Schneiderman, Councilwoman Lofsted, who is the trustee's liaison to the town board, uh, Comptroller Marchese, uh, Town Attorney Jim Burke, uh, the Director of Human Resources, uh, President Warner, Trustee Horowitz, and Special Counsel Lombardo. 
Can we put uh, make one change to that? Put an alternative uh, trustee on there in case one of us can't make the meeting. That way, uh, you know, we'll have the availability of uh, at least two uh, trustees being present at the meeting. Okay. To be determined. So, do we want to just leave that as an open spot? Do we want to appoint um, one of the? Well, what's the normal procedure if there has to be a meeting and somebody can't make it? Uh, does, does he have the ability to? Uh, I, I, Substitute. Designate. I can, designate. We can designate that uh, you know the, the president has the power to you know designate an alternate trustee to attend in, in the event that one trustee can't attend the meeting. That sounds sensible. Are we are we good yeah, for that? Yeah. So fine. we'll, we'll leave it. Yeah. We'll leave yeah. it open and we'll designate as <laughs> we need it. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We'll do that. Yes. Because this is a really important uh, undertaking that the board and the and the uh, both boards are doing, and I want to make sure we get it right and move it forward uh, with no uh, issues this time. All right. Okay. Thank you, Martha. You're welcome. Um, next uh, discussion is uh, I got a proposal from Anderson Tooling. Uh, when we uh, issue our recreational licenses to the uh, freeholders, taxpayers for free, we supply them with a uh, a clam gauge. Uh, the last purchase, I believe, was about four or five years ago. Uh, we purchased 2,000 clam gauges. I got a proposal from Anderson Tooling uh, to uh, pur uh, purchase 2,000 clam gauges at 65 cents each for a total of $1,300. It's something uh, I believe that everybody that gets a license <coughs> should have, and uh, that way they, may, they don't take any undersized clams. So I'd like to move that forward. To, to are these the, plastic or metal? These are plastic, Billy. Like, like the last one, too. Yep. Yeah, okay. yep. There's none left. We're totally out. We're down to the point where we should reorder them. I had a conversation I'm fine with, with uh, the uh, Gary at the Anderson Tooling, and he was asking me about ordering and uh, the price break and uh, where, you know, if we don't get X amount, it's going to cost us more than 65 cents, and this seems to be the most reasonable. This is the last order we had done and it, w it worked that good so I mean I believe we issue about 3,500 licenses that's every year that's correct um, so uh, you know it sounds like a lot but you know some people have their life uh, have their clam gauges from previous years when we issue a new uh, license it uh, it's important that everybody <coughs> has one on them okay okay right. thank you Ed. James do you want to come up for this so moving along with the uh, bid process for uh, Baycrest Avenue new pier catwalk, um, we had the walkthrough yesterday for any potential bidders um, at Baycrest. John McDonald and I and uh, Trustee Welker were down there. Uh, we did have a question arise from one of the potential bidders. About James, can I just interrupt you before you go much farther? For the people out in the TV land, can you explain exactly what this is? Yeah, so it's a new project for Baycrest Avenue. Uh, the end of Baycrest Avenue, there's a pier uh, that is deteriorating. The, the uh, bulkhead is pretty much shot, and it really needs to be done. It, it is a trusty facility. Yes. And, and just to clarify what's going on, there's this area that we're talking about, the walkthrough and, and looking at, is, is a trustee-owned facility. And then there's a very large bulkhead uh, that is north of that, about 900 feet, which is a town facility. Correct. So we, I just want to, you know, when they talk about a project and it's going to go forward, and I think that's what Billy was alluding to, that we have to separate the two now because, you know, uh, the cost of the project is substantial and we can only afford what is ours and the town is going to have to look at what is theirs. Yes. So the pier and the ramp and a section of the bulkhead is within trustee jurisdiction owned by the trustees. And off to the, the other side is ours too. What's that? This side right here is ours. Eastern side? Yeah, Eastern the beach side. area. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, that's all in the in the bid process right now. Um, do you want me to go more detail on what's going to happen? The pier is going to be replaced. A uh, section of the pier that dog legs out is going to be taken out and a catwalk 
um, with a couple of boat slips that are going to be put in um, mm -hmm. as approved. Uh, I don't know how many years ago by the board. Yeah. Uh, finally, it's coming to come fruition. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we, we it's a good worked, project. We worked yes. a deal with the town, right? Where we formed a, uh, an agreement where the town allowed us use of their bonding ability, and we've been paying the debt service on that. So it's uh, one of a few projects that we were going to do. Bay Avenue was one. This is another one. Right. They bond for us, and then we can fix a trustee facility that is used by everybody in the town. How long has this been sitting? A while. Since I, I, uh, since I was up in that area when I first got on it, so it's probably 10 years. Ten years. 13 years. years ago when I wow. took office, it was in bad shape. Yeah. So um, They're going to fix the ramp, too? Yes. Upgrade the ramp. We're just getting to do it now. Yeah. It's the, original, it's the original project, we were looking to do the whole entire project, and it was like $2.3 million, which was way over what yeah. we could afford. Originally, that was... <coughs> oh, sorry. That was the town and, and the trustees. Originally, these pairs were used years ago, like the one down by the college, what we just did, and this one, the one up in um, by Eastport there. Yeah, Eastport Cove. Eastport Bay Avenue. Cove, Bay Avenue. Is years ago, the clams used to come in here, and the clam truck used to park down here by the clams. I, when I was a little kid, I go on with my father, and I had probably unloaded his clams with his father there two years yep. ago. Yeah, there was uh, this area would uh, you know allow about almost a hundred uh, uh, clam boats to be tied up in, in, along the bulkhead, and and that was prior to the bridge being placed there. Uh, once the bridge was placed to the island on the other side, it basically cut it uh, off. Cut off the uh, ability for the clams to tie up their tong boats and other boats there. But it's an important uh, access point to for the recreational commercial fishermen, baymen, and fishing people of the town, and also the commercial uh, construction people because it's uh, this is the uh, only access ramp other than Bay Avenue in Murch's Bay for them to access uh, with their barges and uh, put material on a barge to do uh, uh, projects around the bay. So I think it's a really good project, and I'm glad it's finally coming uh, to uh, fruition here. So while that ramp is out of commission, where do they put in then? It would be uh, the next launching ramp east would be, be uh, Bay Avenue okay. in Eastport. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a launching ramp that the village of West Hampton has in Moneyborg. Okay. And then the next launching ramp to the east of that would be uh, in Quantic Bay, and that would be the village of Quag. And then east of that would be Shinnecock Road, the village of Quag. Because those, oops, sorry. And then Bay Avenue in East Quag. Because so. those questions were asked yesterday by, in, a, in both um, a fisherman and a, a, a commercial fisherman yep. and a uh, dock builder. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, hopefully we get a contractor, uh, a local contractor that has the ability to, uh, you know, basically bang it out in a, in a quick, timely fashion and, uh, in, you know, a couple months and it should be done. So. Okay. So the the main reason why I'm here, uh, when the question that needs to be answered by the board today is uh, so then we could do a addendum, if need be, uh, to the bid. So then it's an accurate bid uh, for when it opens up for the. What specifically? Uh, the, the question is regarding the gate. There's a gate down there currently in that photo. Yes. Um, the question was. Um, can the contractor or should the contractor remove that gate uh, for construction access and then replace it back into its natural state or is there another gate that the trustees want or if it will this suffice for that? Well, this is the gate that was placed there because of the uh, pier falling apart. So I, right now it's, it's, it closes the pier off and I would leave it there during the uh, construction phase and he's looking to replace it at the... Uh, he's looking so then they can get in there to access it with their uh, machinery. Yeah. They need to remove that. Um, they will replace it if necessary, uh, but we just have to add that I'm, to the bid yeah. so Are that they it's gonna accurate. Are going to have some type of fencing to block this off when they're doing a the construction down there so people just can't walk down? Oh, of course they're going to have... Yeah. Uh, so you won't, you're going to need the gate there while they're doing it. Yeah. He's talking so, afterwards. Afterwards, right. So well, he's going to put the gate back. Afterwards. I think we should have the gate there. Just we might want to leave it open, but 
it's good to have it just in case we want to close it. Right. We, we install it. We put gates and locks on these because some of the contractors would use the piers. Yeah, did some I, did some damage to them and uh, going uh, as as that happened, we asked the contractor to contact our office prior to use utilizing the uh, pier. I mean, it's something that we maybe should actually give a permit and have the bay constables or maintenance guys uh, supervise opening and closing so that we know who's down there and who's using it. I know so, we had this discussion yeah, a few ago. times. Yeah, it's so gotta, uh, that's got to be cool. Removing it and, re yeah, and reinstallation re will add as yep. an addendum to the bid process yeah, yeah. so then they can get an accurate one. Yep, okay. All right. Thank you, James. Thanks. Um, you want to start on the permits, James? Yeah. Um, Salvatore, Russia, 23 Nortless Drive, Lincoln Bears, NPR Construction. The applicant is proposing to, oh, first of all, it's uh, 3 Nortless Drive, Hampton Bays. Uh, the applicant is proposing uh, to reconstruct in place, same height, 103 feet of bulkhead to install two 10-foot vinyl returns, backfill with 25 cubic yards of clean fill, establish a 10-foot non-turf Beach grass buffer area landward of the bulkhead. All work should be completed landward uh, with silt uh, curtain to be installed, all material to be untreated. Generally pretty basic. Yes. Except for the large area of cord grass, just seaward. Yes. Which is why we're doing all the work landward. And I planned on the silt curtain to be installed for protection. Um. Okay, everybody's familiar with this area. Uh, it's on Wells's Creek. Um, it's the uh, property that was owned by one of the past supervisors, Martin Lang. Uh, I'm familiar with it. Um, there is a, a, a wetlands in front of it. That's why we're asking for everything to be done from behind the bulkhead. Um, I've been there actually several times looking at the property. Um, several uh, people asked me to look at it through the, through the years because they were potentially buyers and right. looking at so but I mean it's a really good project and it basically conforms to everything we need as far as the trustees regulations and there's no change in elevation of the bulkhead nope. the, no. same height. same height. the property to the south is the same height so I plan to be the same height cool. it's level properties um, there's no elevation changes really too much in there it's a flag lot off the road so it's correct you know, very little runoff that comes down that road correct so it's a, it's, a, it's a good property as far as maintaining the, you know, the runoff Great. on the property. The bulk is in bad shape. Yes. yes. There's some sinkholes. It's like just dangerous. Yeah. Right, so Hazard. We're good with that. We yeah. can move it forward. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to stay up for the next one? Do you have other ones up here? I just have one Scott? more. Here we'll is that all right? The, the Stola? Yeah. Just to take it. do Dolphin Road? Yes. That's great. Real quick. Um, also, same thing. Bulkheads in bad shape. I actually fell in on this one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on this one here. You have, you have a copy of the plans there? Yeah. Um, it's 112 linear feet. Um, of course, replacing it in place with vinyl. Um, when I was there, I measured the bulkheads to the north as well as to the south. To the north is um, uh, six inches higher. To the south is about 16 inches. So I figured I would just match the other one, the six inch one, unless um, the board will allow anything higher than that. My question. I use the one in the oh, you want to use this yeah. one? Yeah. My, my, our question was about did you have a floating dock there? There is a float there that um, we're proposing to replace. It's five. Point five feet by 12, which is relatively small. Now, you, you're proposing that to be kicked away from the bulkhead, though, right? No, it's in the same place as the other float. 
but we're dredging, we're maintenance dredging. So there'll be enough water by the time the bulkhead's done with a maintenance dredge under the float. The float will be in the same spot. Is that permitted to where it is right now? I'm unaware of that. Um, I could, I did pull and foil all the other permits. Um, so I couldn't find anything. So basically I told the owner that I have to apply to take out what's there and put in a proper legal float and ramp assembly mm. the correct way. Yeah, I'm not sure based on what you're showing. I just want to find a good picture of this. You, you have a plan of where you're showing this? Right. I have the plan of what's existing and the plan of what's proposed right under it. And the catwalk extends 11.5 feet. Um, it's a it's this sliding catwalk. He kind of just slides it out and then flops down on the float. He kind of yes. likes it that way. Here's the bulkhead. This is yeah. Shinnecock Shores. Yes. Very narrow canals. So they're kicking this thing almost 12 feet. Out. Very narrow canal. Do they have the uh, uh, distance across? It's, I actually, it does just make 25% of the width of the waterway. The dock? The, the whole dock, yes. Oh, the yeah. dock is within about about a boat feet, there. How about eight feet from the dock? The, 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 a boat? Um, yeah, I'm not required boat. for the boat. It's 25 feet of the width yeah, of the waterway is what the standard is. a 10-foot wide boat there, yeah. you're going to take... It's like, but the, does it have to be that way? I mean, what's the... Why are we doing this? Are they going to excavate next there. to the bulkhead, reclaim any material? Yeah, we're maintenance dredging. So, then, so they could pull the back. dock back. Pull it back. I mean, that's what we yeah, usually do. Then you keep the, keep the uh, canal as wide as it could be. I mean... I, Trying to figure out what it is they're trying if, to. If he help. if he does if he doesn't do it, all his neighbors want to kill him. Yeah, I mean if they're the going to do. The dog's been there though in the same spot. So I'm saying I don't. You would see if that was permitted already, like my friend. Sorry. Do you know? Yeah, he doesn't have a big back. Yeah. Well, if he's going to do dredging in the area and he's going to go four feet below mean low water, then you would have to pull it back for our regulations. If you were flying, you want to be in at least 30 inches of water on the inner terminus of the dock, correct? Yeah, but we'll just. Yeah, it'll be on the. It'll be two and a half feet in the landward. Yes, yeah, so I. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah, pull it closer to the bulkhead and shorten that. Could you yeah. do a um, ramp that's parallel to the bulkhead? No, I'd have to down. build up. I'd have to do like a platform to do a ramp to move you the could boat. Do that. You could do a platform yeah. to I'll a ramp to. going down and then, and then gain some more space on that canal. I'll have to check with the owner and see if he wants and it on an L. Keep it or, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, pull it closer. I mean, it, it, if everybody in the neighborhood gets a very large boat, then there's no room to navigate in there, and that, that becomes a pro potential problem. Mm -hmm. That's the only issue that I saw. Right? And if he's doing the dredging, you may as well pull it back and shorten, get as much of the uh, dock that's out. Out of the water close as you can to yes, I'll keep it, but I'll keep it deeper because I'll right. go move there. That's yeah. the only issue that I saw with the plant. Okay. But that's, yeah. All right, if you want to hold it over, I will see what he wants to do. Okay. Well, he's he's going to be very, very. Right, I know. There's 67 feet wide, roughly. How old? 67. I put it on here. Yeah, it's 67. It's okay. narrow. We're all the same. Okay, let me see what he wants to do. Okay. Is he holding yeah. this up? Hold it. Yeah. Hold it. Thanks, Regina. All right, I have. Hi, Regina. You too. Hi. Walter Xavier Stratton the third, sixty Little Neck uh, Road, Shinnecock Hills, Bio Permits Inc. Mr. Colfields and the audience. Good afternoon, Good all. Hello, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, I found out about this last night, so I'm a little bit unprepared. Okay. You have to give me more than a day's notice, please. I'm not getting unprepared. Um, 
project is to replace in place elevate one foot 70 feet of wooden bulkhead with shore guard 425 or equivalent vinyl sheathing bulkhead replace an existing eight foot return on the southerly property line place a five cubic yards of clean fill beyond the bulkhead install a 10 by 70 foot natural uh, vegetated uh, area um, beyond the proposed bulkhead install a 4 by 27 vinyl grate pier um, a 4 by tw one, uh, 20 float and a 3 by 12 ramp install two vertical pass and repass stairs on both sides of the pier um, this is a middle pond yes. I was at the site a couple of times um, all the properties are pretty much the same here and there as far as heights and stuff like that. Uh, the bulkhead looks like it was placed in probably in the 70s. Nothing has been changed in the area. So you're looking to uh, elevate the property or uh, the bulkhead one foot. Just the bulkhead. Just Excuse the bulkhead. Me, sir. Could you just state bulkhead. your name for the record, please? Your name for the record, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. It's Clay Coalfield. The company is Environment Enviro Permits. Thank you so much, Mr. Coalfield. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, we're, we're trying to, it, it, the, bu the bulkheads are, you know, like this, in between the two properties, and we're going to be doing two properties yes. at the same time. So it's an effort to get them to be more level from one end to the other end, because right now they're not. They, you know, they go down and up, and they've been heaved a little bit. Uh, what you may not know in, on the, the, uh, the new house property, which I think is 61, they're, they're, uh, we were digging around back there, and trying to figure out what was down behind the present bulkhead. There's two more bulkheads back there. So they have to be removed in order to get the dead man in properly. And th those are the the bulkheads, you know, that are, you know, so pre-town pre, pre uh, town code, and they're all... Um, so you're going to, this project, you see, it means I, I, I haven't been down here, uh, it's grass there, it looks like, I mean, to me, I was... On the, on the, on the one that's closest to the, the road I forget what I think that's 50 61 okay um, the one with the new house on it the one with the new house yes. on it that one already has a area that was that was uh, determined to be um, you know a buffer zone 57 doesn't have it and that will okay. so they'll be joined together look yeah. the same and you said that there's a prior bulkhead behind the bulkheads that are there now there's there may be two so are you you're gonna pull the the new proposed bulkhead to that pier line. You're going to remove all to the, the property line. To the prop. Well, to the first, take out the old stuff. Yes. Put your dead men in. Then, then work on 10 to 15 foot sections on the on, the, on so, that's on so, the new. So house. you're moving everything landward, basically the whole. If it's it, if it is beyond the property line, yes. Okay, because there are some wetlands in the area, I want to make sure that there's minimal disturbance. It's down there. it's um, that's the idea of pulling out the stuff behind, and then doing the stuff in front. You might be able to see so on 57, I don't know if there's a, a prior bulkhead, but I I would assume that there was one or something in there buried. Doesn't doesn't show it on there. But I'll show that. The wetland to be marked on yeah. well, I got pictures here. There are pictures, yes. Let's see what this is. What we're looking at there. Here's the area. Looks like the bulkhead is the survey. So yes. I, I guess when you excavate all this material, the the pier line that's going to be there is going to be pretty much where it is now. Yeah, it's going to be the same place. Yeah, you're going to within, a, but I would say within inches of, not, of yes. more, less than a foot. So yeah. you're not going to go cut into the wetlands at all. No. Okay. No. Um, we plan to vibrate in. 
But you've got to keep in mind that the old one has to be pulled out. Yes. It's not going to be cut down at the water line because that's counterproductive. All right. Is there a revegetation uh, of the wetlands grass in this project? If the, not, um, I, I, we, we hadn't planned on it um, because it, it's, it's, if you go in there and, and put new vegetation in, you're liable to disturb what's already there. And I think I think it's starting to come back from what I've been seeing over the over the uh, the year that I've been looking at it. So it's increasing, and and you know that's why that's why we're doing all this this work behind the bulkhead and minimal you know disturbance of what's there. Well, I mean, I, I would really, I mean, James, would that be something that we should incorporate in this project? Is uh, it, once the bulkhead is. Uh, you know, placed in that we should have some kind of uh, reveg in front of it to make sure that the wetlands that is there now will uh, continue to uh, expand. Ed, can I just see the plans? Sure. Yeah, anything that's disturbed in front. Yeah, anything that's disturbed is definitely going to be redone. Well, then, then you should you should have that in the character of work. Any uh, any need for a revegetation in that area will be done after the bulkhead is. Uh, finished you, know, and you can contact our office James can go down there or myself or myself and James meet with you at the site and I, I believe we're going to be looking at both sites to make sure that there's absolutely minimal disturbance and then if we need a reveg we're going to that's going to be part of the uh, you know part of the conditions part of the, of the conditions absolutely 100 percent special condition put a special, yeah, special yeah. condition the, on, the only thing that I find that it's going to be a little more difficult is if you're going to put in a, a plant there um, you'd have to get almost like um, something more than a juvenile plant to put in there because it may not take because there is some uh, boating activity in there that might just uproot and then you have the the wildlife in there that loves to pick out that stuff well I mean so at least we're gonna make a attempt we're gonna make an attempt and, and I've seen where plugs especially if they put in the springtime and they're mm -hmm. you know proper properly uh, you know uh, irrigated and uh, you know with the with the water and stuff like that they will take very quickly and it's a very limited I'm talking area. about the ones in the water. Yes. Yeah. That's the ones I'm talking about. Yeah, you actually okay. take a plug and you stick it in. You plug it in, it in yeah. yeah. Put yeah. a stick next to it. Yes. Yeah. I find that if you find some place that has a lot of, of those plants, you know, a ton of floor, you go out and you can take a plant of an actual one in the vicinity and pump it in Well, there. I just like to have <laughs> and make sure that the area is, is better than when we started. Absolutely. I think it's a, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting area down there. And uh, the wetlands have... have been coming back over yeah. the last 20 or so years. You want to make sure after the project's completed that the wetland continues to thrive. I'm always that's there. That's the whole key, you know? That, that's my business. What we got to do to get that to happen is what we got to do. You know, spending 34 years at, at the DEC, you kind of like wears off on you a little bit. Yeah. So you know. So I'm just curious about um, the, ele the elevation of one foot. What are the properties on either side? They're the same. They're all pretty much the same. They're pretty much the same. Right now. Yes. Right now. So this the one doesn't have the one is not elevated because it's like almost like a shoreline as rocks. Yeah. So this will be a foot higher than yes. properties on either side. So what are what are you proposing to mitigate the runoff? The, when because I, it, it's I, chronic. I put the, the one foot in there because DEC likes to see that. And what I, my my our attempt is to make it as even as possible without you know going to the one foot. And, and as to mitigating that, how would you want me to mitigate the one foot? I mean, you, you do have returns on each side yeah, well, of the property as well, so that'll help. So the, there are returns. There's, a, there's an eight-foot return on the south, eight, southerly side, so that would uh, keep everything on his on the on, proposed yes. project on the property. Yes. And you're going to put what type of vegetation in the in the ten foot buffer? Like I would say beach grass. Cape American beach grass. American beach that grass would, would be a good uh, and, um, root system. I, d I don't think we're going to put any bushy plants in there because the houses are not high enough to yeah. see over it, and he's he, he has a very short backyard now. Yes, yeah, so t a ten foot buffer of Cape American Absolutely. beach grass would give us a much better project than we have right now. Is it, oh yeah. Basically, astroturf or lawn right up to the uh, bulkhead. Okay. Oh, absolutely. I'm just concerned because this is an area where there's chronic flooding, so not just occasional I, storms. I, I, the the new house is not at elevation 10, mm -hmm. and that and so I don't know what the um, flooding of the area is, but I think if it was a flooding area, it would have been built on stilts. 
the new house? Um, I can tell you, Sandy, it was three feet of water this all the way up to the all the way up the road, all yeah. the way up to the traffic right. light. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, so it, it is. A, you're going to get flooding, but uh, with the grass, situation. at least it will maintain. You know, the oh, the, the waves, the wave action. It also maintain any material on the From property moving in and out, moving around. Yeah. So I didn't I see the that would help. But the bulkhead hasn't been elevated. This bulkhead that's there, uh, one of them just to the south is creosote. So that looks to me like it was there in the 70s. Right. So, so that's an, a long time without any elevation change. And if we do something, they have a return. They're going to put grass, so everything should be maintained on the property. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Are we good to move that ahead then? Yeah, you can just put a special condition on there. Yep. Right? Yep. James, help me with the special condition. Good. Good. So we did both of them? Well, we just now we're going to do, gonna do the second one. The it's other same. one is... It's the, the same. <laughs> it's a neighbor's property. Or well, I don't know if it's the same owner or not. No, it's the same owner. Okay, we have an application of 57 Little Neck Road, LLC. 57 Little Neck Road. It's the adjoining property to the one we just discussed. Um, scope of work is uh, to replace and elevate one foot 78 feet of wooden bulkhead with shore guard uh, 425 or equivalent sheathing uh, bulkhead. Replace the existing northerly 20 foot return and southerly 8 foot return. Reinstall in place the existing chain link fence. Replace five cubic yards of fill laminate bulkhead. Reinstall a 10 by 70 foot natural vegetated area landward of the proposed uh, bulkhead. Install uh, two vertical lattice at the uh, fixed each side of the existing pier. No treated lumber to be used on the project. Tropical hardwood material would be employed. Um, soundings are as follows. Place, place of the bulkhead is zero. 10 feet from the bulkhead is two feet. 20 feet from the bulkhead is two and a half feet. And 30 feet is uh, four and a half feet. So um, basically it's an adjoining property like I just said. And this is uh, the pictures. There is an elevate. There is a. There's a catwalk here already, correct? On this property. Yes. So the catwalk float and ramp. So what, basically, you're going to leave that there and just elevate. I mean, it, this is a fairly new. Uh, it's a new. Yeah, it's very new. So you're looking to probably just elevate that to the half a step to accommodate the. Uh, or it will be slanted. You know. Yes. To lift it up to the, the elevation change of the bulkhead. So, like I said, it's the adjoining property to the uh, one we just discussed. And same situation as before. Yep. We're going to lose the lawn. Yep. Okay. We're gonna keep American and Beach grass for the buffer. And any uh, revegetation that's necessary will be done in and around the uh, bulkhead area. So we can move that ahead. We're advancing that at yes, the same special condition? Yep, same condition, Jeff. Okay, Clay. Do you have any other uh, applications? Uh, no, not today. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Clay. Thank, thank you all. Yep. Yeah. Do you want to uh, send me those special conditions? So I can make a comment on it before you put it into the convention. And also I'll go over with them with my clients. Because they're concerned about their vacuum. All right? Thank you. Good to see you again. Okay. You How's the that. fishing? Good? Pretty good, yes. That's good. Coming into the busy season. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Ready? I got a bunch here. Got the Iron Use. Yep. Eleven Bay View Drive, Village of Quag. Are we skipping the first one, Scott? We already we did. did. We did that one. Oh, okay. On hold. I don't know why I didn't get that one. Sorry. Okay. It was a Gina. You. Sorry. Thank you. All right. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Make a presentation. Yeah, this is uh, interesting. I'm sorry, sir. Could you state your name for the record, uh, please? Chuck Bowman, Land Use Ecological Services. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, one question I had, now this is about a, uh, uh, creating a boat slip on a vacant piece of property that we now have permission from DEC and the village to What's the address? On. Pardon me? The address. Uh, the, dra the address is 11 Bayview Drive. Okay. Uh, it's actually the last uh, <clears throat> piece of property. Uh, it also borders the canal. Um, my impression of this whole canal is actually uh, that it's privately owned. Uh, it's a dredge canal, and there's deeds all up and down it where the people actually own it. Into the middle? Into the, well, actually, if you go up further uh, the, to the properties to the north, uh, to the survey, um, those people that are on the, on the west side of the canal own all the way across to the east side of the canal. Uh, so, so the people on the west own all the way to the east? All the way to the and east the side. people on the east only own to the back here? Only own to the... Theoretically, the high water mark, okay. and there was a piece of property uh, further owned by a guy by the name of Strecker, you know, that uh, actually did a lawsuit, and he actually cut his boat slip uh, into it because he didn't go past that property line. Okay. Um, but um, I guess my question is, uh, if uh, if uh, Mr. Miller, you know, owns to the center line and, and actually is deeded, it's not trustee bottom, you know, whether you know he actually needs a permit here. Uh, or not, but we want to make sure that we well, I think there's precedent on regulation by the trustees in the area for a long time. Oh, it's no problem. I just, I'm just pointing out that it's you know, it's it's uh, definitely privately owned uh, bottom. So, you know, what we're planning on doing is is just like all the other um, a lot of the other properties here is to cut in a 25 by 40 foot slip uh, and remove the material to four feet of low water and uh, then have a, a path to it. As you can see on the, the plans, there's a, a significant buffer. The house is set yeah. way back, which I know is in their jurisdiction. We went through considerable hoops to be able to uh, you know, uh, create this uh, building envelope. Uh, and the canal, canal is pretty wild and pretty narrow. so. Yeah. The Warren Canal before the uh, village of Quagga uh, launching ramp on the. Uh, is it the uh, west house on, on the same canal? Is it the canal? A boathouse? Yeah, there's a house where you can drive the boat to. It must be the, might be the one. Maybe. Canal. The property on uh, Fog Canal to the east uh, also has a, uh, a, a boat stick. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, that was one of the things that the trustees always were. Uh, very encouraging much in favor of oh, sure to get rid of any uh, you know projections into the yes. yes uh huh uh, I mean this and you can see on uh, I don't know if you have yep. the survey in front of you too you can see where the property line is uh, this property line is actually uh, pretty much the center line of the canal so are they going to bulkhead this no just the slip. They're just going to make a uh, indentation into the wetlands and uh, for correct. And the the DEC in. permit there's a tiny little area of fringe of alternative flora okay. that we're going to be replanting to some of the other so there'll be, areas. There'll be no this. net loss of wetlands. No, no. So no this is a good project. And oh, I, I think so. And I and I think because it is a narrow canal, uh, it's yes. going to make it a lot easier for. And, and the canals, uh, there's quite a few boats on that canal. Yes. You don't have an overhead shot. Of it, I, you know? I didn't bring one. Okay. This is a DEC permit here. He said dredge excavate 25 by 60 area to a depth of four feet below mean low water and install 105 feet of bulkhead to create a boat slip. Dispose of any dredge material at an approved off site location. All authorized activities shall be performed in strict conformance with the attached plan stamp New York State DEC. Approved 118 19. Yeah. They're putting what a 50 foot buffer or. Yeah, I know. Uh, you actually see the buffer is it's really minimum 50 feet some places. It's, it's a little bit larger. Is that native vegetation? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, uh -huh. in the village. village. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, can we, I, th I think we should have a uh, hold this over and have a conversation with our attorney about this because I have I have some questions of the project. Yeah. I think we should uh, you know, hold this until we can. Uh, uh, are you fine with that? Oh, sure. I, mean, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I just want to let you know sure. what the questions are. Yeah, because we, we both have some questions. Yes. <laughs> I, have, I have multiple questions. And do you have an application in before the Village of Fog? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. All right. To their building department? I believe to the build. Yeah, because okay. the, for the boats that bulkhead. But, yep. you know, they generally want to see your permits yeah. and, right. and uh, DEC yeah. as well. Yeah. So. Right. Well, I think it's a conversation, you know, uh, because we... It's the problem is we we, yeah. um, we never oops I just pushed the wrong button. Drunk okay. and worse. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, so let's hold this over so we can have a discussion. You can have a discussion. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 We just want to make sure we're not making any mistakes on both yeah. sides. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that, that's fine. Like I say, it's it's an unusual situation. Yeah. No, it is. And now as well. So uh, no, I, I get it. Uh, not not a, not a problem. That's on hold. Then we have uh, four for almost four. <laughs> Don't ask me what it means. Right? I've given up a long time ago trying to figure <laughs> out what the LLCs are. Okay. The best one I saw was over on Georgica, immense house, and it was. My wife really likes it, LLC. <laughs> that was the name of. <laughs> okay. Okay, so four for almost four. Yeah. Let's go down. Let me just get the. Uh, sure. Uh, this has an existing, I guess you'd call it a boathouse. Yeah, you want to remove? It's actually, we're making it the footprint of the boathouse uh, smaller. Uh, they are, you know, reshingling it. Uh, they are. Uh, taking the actual structure, the house structure, and, and reducing that inside, making the deck a little bit bigger, but basically the footprint gets reduced by about 41 square feet of it. Uh, none of the pilings are being replaced. Uh, it's basically for uh, recreational equipment storage. Is, it, is there a bathroom in there? No. No bathroom? No. Not going to be a bathroom? No. No. So the applicant is also proposing refurbish, reduce the existing boathouse. No new or additional pilings proposed. 152 square feet of existing boathouse area is proposed to be removed on the northwest side. 250, 215 square foot of the existing boathouse is proposed to be replaced with deck. Right. 69 square feet of the existing boathouse is to be modified. 44 square feet of new deck is proposed at northwest corner and 67 square feet of new deck is proposed near the southwest corner as depicted on the plans. 482 square feet of existing boathouse and 784 square feet of existing deck are to remain. Existing areas, boathouse is going to be 918 square feet, deck 784 square feet for a total of 1,702 square feet. Um, proposed areas, boathouse 551 square feet, deck 1110, total 1661, total reduction 41 square feet. Okay, so <coughs> since you're going to, you're adding more deck in to, to behind, right behind the bulkhead, right? Right, it, and that's really just for access. We're actually yeah. taking the house out. Taking the house, house and moving it back. Making that where the house this is, is well. deck. Okay. And then be able to connect uh, just the deck on each side so you can get around. Yeah. You can get around. And, um, and you got a CO for the, the, the pool house. What are, I mean, the, oh, the boat house. house. Oh, yeah. And what does the drainage go from there? Is it going go to dry wells or just run on the grass? It would just run onto the grass. I can ask them to put a dry well. Yeah, in. I would, because yeah. that way it'll keep it from. Right. You, you want have gutters. Deck. I mean, you, you could. Self-contained. Yeah, self-contained. Yeah, self gutters yeah. and, and, a, and a dry well. Sure, yeah. sure. Not a problem. They had wanted, of course, to expand. No. Chance in hell. That would never happen. No. <laughs> it's also here. This is a, you can take a look at this here. Thank you. Yeah, nice. This is just this Plans.
Are there pictures there too, Scott? Yep, got them right here. the file for the county health. If you're going to put a restroom or a bathroom in there, you have to put not, it. Not happening. So you could never do that because it's right in the wetlands. Right. Plus, you start doing all of that. Right now, under FEMA, it's not habitable area. As soon as you start putting you know, bathrooms and kitchens yeah. and all that, the whole thing would have to be lifted up. Elevated. Just the pictures. You know, yep. uh, okay. You, know. you want to look at this? Here's another set of plans you can look at. at this property years, years, years ago. It's a cool piece of property. Yeah. yeah 30 years ago. Yeah. With a friend who rented it. Yeah. Rented well, they have these little outbuildings, too, that are yeah. really... A lot of the outbuildings are old house. Yeah. I think the old house was torn down. Yeah. Quite the project. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, it is. It's not a... <laughs> Place, it's uh, not, it's not a common thing. Okay. That's right. No <laughs> elevations. No. The whole house is built. Really? Yes. 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 Yeah. It doesn't have a bathroom. Yeah, so we just got it. Yeah. Yeah. got it right here. Yeah. yeah. No, I was going to enjoy it. And, and, and again, it's sure. just. Thank you. Yeah. It can't happen. The easy one would have happened. Help the part. And it's just. And you'd have to raise the whole thing and be sitting probably six feet higher in the air. So. Does the DEC permit stipulate where the work is to be done from? Um, no, uh, it, it doesn't, but I, I think it would be done from the existing decking that's there and inside. Well, it, I, I wouldn't... In it, it, does say, it does say, though, this is the permit right here, condition number 11, it says no disturbance of vegetated tidal wetlands, there shall be no disturbance the vegetated tidal wetlands or protected buffer areas as a result of the permitted activities. Right, right. So but I, the only way they can work is inside and on the house, and that's going to be from the existing deck. Yeah. So, you know, I would think they're not going to work in the wetlands. Right. You you know, need to well, it's, there's water. I mean, there's water there. You'd have yeah. to be on a boat. You know, nope. so. Yeah, 12, no construction debris in wetland or adjacent area. Any debris or excess material from construction of this project shall be completely removed from the adjacent area upland we move to an approved upland area for disposal, no debris of committed in wetlands and or protected buffer areas. Scott, that's in the conditions. Yeah, so 11 and 12. In the DEC. In the DEC. Okay. So do we, can we echo those or are they, is there any no, point can. in doing that? No, we can. It's no, no problem. Belt and suspenders. Sure. Yeah, because you got to comply with all the permits. Yeah. With yeah. all the. Boats and ramps may not rest on or be stored in any vegetated tidal wetland. So he's got a lot of restrictions on here. Just like we have in ours. Yep. What do you think, folks? I'm okay as long as there's no work in the wetlands. No, I think we probably good. want to put the drywall in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I made a note of that. Yeah. So you want to hold it for um, waiting for our updated cover sheet, or what? Well, just a special condition would be fine. That you can okay. The gutter and well, drywall should be maintained on the yeah, drywall. Yeah. Yeah. Jane, help me with that. Yep. So we're advancing okay. with a special condition. Yep. Fine. Yeah, that'd be great. Sounds good, Lisa. Fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. See you guys. See you later. Next one we have is uh, Edgewater Builders Three Ramp Pasture Road Ocean Consulting. Anybody here from Ocean Consulting? Just hold it over. Well, like that's easy. It's, it's 
Ezio Frank signing. That's yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, this is a commercial facility. Um, the bulkheading there is all is all deteriorating. He wants to remove and replace approximately 120 foot existing bulkhead Navy style up. He wants to go up to 16 inches higher um, at a 16 foot section along the boat ramp parking area existing height to remain as existing clamshell dredge a 10 foot wide area along the bulkhead to four feet MLW. Um, for 25 cubic yards in place behind bulkhead, remove and replace existing 15 by 36 wood boat launch with precast concrete panels. So it's a uh, it's a deteriorating bulkhead at a commercial facility. Um, yeah, some pictures here. With a considerable amount of runoff that runs into the uh, water over down. So actually elevating it would be a good way to be able to ask to put some catch basins. Some drainage. Drainage. See, we were looking at that also so it's on the plans right. depicted here. Because you'll see that it, the way it's set up, it is just running straight in. It, it's, it's in. It's and now if they change that around, even if he did, because it's commercial, with some, you know, stones there or blue something. Stones, blue yeah. stones, to catch yep, that yep. Would, be, would be better than yes. just having it going straight into the bay. Um, you actually should put some drywalls in. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, you have to see what. Uh, see if you look at the uh, here's a here's a good picture right here. As you can see the way it is. I mean, he's he's done the stone there to try and lessen what he can. Yeah. If you look at the condition of this bulkhead, yeah. it is yeah, it's shot, that, but it's yeah. very very steep. steep. Yeah. So if he if he changes it, he can maybe play with the uh, and, pitch. Yeah. I mean, that, that should be a couple. I mean, especially on the upland portion of this if, if, launching ramp, you could put a put, French, if, he, if he put drywalls back here. That's out of our jurisdiction. I know, but he might have to go back to the site. And, um, this would be such a great project for one of the permeable reactive barriers that's adjacent to a bulkhead. Wish those were permitted now. That would catch, that would help catch a lot of this runoff. This is at the end of Smith's Creek. I know. It's adjoining to our trustee property. Right, it's right next yeah. to our property. And right next to the other. And all the other properties that are to the, um, if you look at the properties that are to the south of this, they're all 18 inches higher. Because you got Spellman's, and they all. We pit. just permitted a property, we allowed them to elevate they're it. They're all higher because everything is higher to the south of it, that whole area. From Ram Pasture Road, everything is pitched to Smith's Creek. Correct. So it makes sense what he wants to do and to deal with it. Let's put some dry drywall, so even if it's out of our jurisdiction. I would suggest it. I would ask, yeah, I would ask for uh, mm -hmm. at least at least four drywalls, a catch basin, some along there. Landlord of the bulkhead? Yes. I mean, he is helping out with the stones there, you know, yeah, not having I mean, it going but, straight in. But I think the catch basins would be, especially if you can elevate the bulkhead where you're going to slow the runoff, it, it, it'll work very we well. We can, we, can, we, can, we can have Matt. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, 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 that would be a benefit. Yeah. And changing within that. Within the 10 feet buffer? Yeah, within the 10 feet. Right. Yeah. Okay. We're holding that, Scott? I don't know, because yeah. we hold it and just have mad that. Yeah, because you want to see plans. You yeah, want to see hold it and have mad that and send it back in. Yeah, you want to see plans, drawings, and, and where they're, how, are you, how are they going to make Yeah, it? let's have him do that. I don't think he's ready. Ha have him discuss it with an engineer so they're properly sided the drain and right. the catch yeah. basins. This is a, like, a commercial bulkhead where you have to take in considerations of like cars or trucks. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to, yeah, so the drywalls have to be absolutely yeah. planned yeah. right to cross on the final. Yeah, he's very close. Okay. He's got, he's got, he has limited space to do anything because it is commercial, but this is all shot. Okay. Yep. So that one's so hold this one, helps. pending new plans showing the uh, drainage, there's dry ones. I think that's all that I have. Right? Daphne, you're up. I gotta wake up back there. I know you've been very waiting very impatiently. I'm very patient. We're doing um, Gubbins property on 40B Island Creek Road. Let's 
see. What's your latest plan? Daphne, you want to state your name for the record, please? Sure. Daphne Vaughn, Surfside Environmental Planning for the applicant. Awesome. Thank you. So we had a public hearing on March 18th on this one, mm -hmm. and uh, the hearing was closed. So I'm here today seeking guidance as to what the next steps are to proceed with this application. Uh, I know I have to do some plan revisions, so I'm kind of looking as to what revisions you would like. It's your area, Bill. It's a tough decision for me because I really don't really think there should be a dock here, but um, we all have the right to go down to the water. I think going down here and then jumping over. So doing a bridge over? Yeah, go bridge, go up high, yeah. go down. I will say that since I left the public hearing, I have been issued a DEC permit for my original proposal going straight. Yeah. Uh, because the DEC is saying that they would prefer that we go through more water than vegetation. We're the opposite. The Department of State, the feedback I've had from yeah. them is the opposite. So yeah. I'm kind of stuck here. <laughs> yeah. See, when you go over the water, you block everything, you know? Mm -hmm. You're taking away all the feeding areas for the, you know, the herrings, the egrets, the birds, the birds that, you know, the kingfishers and ducks and everything. It, it really makes it almost a nuisance for an animal to be able to, uh, you know, be part of the natural habitat there. But going the other way um, kind of like puts it off and doesn't have as much disturbance in the underwater lands, which is specifically our jurisdiction. Yeah. That's what the DOS is calling for? The the Department of State does like the sketch that I did better oh, than what the DEC see. has already So approved. it's two it against one. And the Basically. Army Corps, I haven't had any feedback from, yeah. so. I think, that's, I think this is the one I would be in favor of. I'm only one out of five. Yes. I think it's, the, it's with me. Maintaining the uh, underwater lands and the... Uh, yeah. The ability for you know birds to uh, you know maneuver, and that's in, that syncs yeah, up with the U.S. Yeah. approved. Well, they haven't approved it. They basically made me withdraw the application because they asked for a whole lot of other information on top of that. They wanted yes, written. Well, I mean, with the light stuff. penetrating decking, the elevation, and everything going across the wetlands has, according to the uh, Army Corps, has minimal effect on the environment. The other way has a lot of effect on the environment, between the fish and the, and, and the birds and everything that are in there. So. Um, if going forward, uh, and we get a meeting in the mines here, would the Gubbins be agreeable to maybe uh, putting in two uh, osprey nests and maintaining them in a couple uh, kingfisher uh, nests around there, boxes? Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to get something uh, that you know uh, by putting this here, basically is like mitigation for any environmental issues that could potentially come up. So yeah. Not that we usually do that, but it's probably, all, it's probably only room for one osprey nest. I agree. Yeah. But I mean, I'm looking at all the duck blinds that the osprey nests love to yeah. uh, mm -hmm. nest on. We can get poles out there and let them get on a pole and then we do, well, the survival rate would be much greater. Yeah. Plus that would right. be, be something for them I to look at. I certainly ask. It's trying to be creative. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so uh, I, I think my thought would be to have the one that's the red line that we had so the question with that then becomes, um, I know that we discussed this 40-foot uh, bridge. Mm -hmm. So what criteria are you looking for with that? Go, go up. How high? Um, I guess it would be 
At least 30 inches over high tide, mean high tide. Yeah, yeah three feet to, yeah, it's, or, yeah, so you can yeah. paddle a kayak underneath it yeah. at, at high tide. So 36 yeah. inches. 36 inches. Above high water. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's only the middle part, the middle reasonable? section. Yeah, you don't have to do the whole bridge, just the. the so just the there. parts that are actually yep. crossing the, the high water. Yep. Yeah. It depends on who's in that kind. Yeah, that's true. Maybe you need to go a little higher. <laughs> Take it like your Verrazano. <laughs> you may do a drawbridge. That's how easy. Get somebody to raise it. So basically, you probably only have like eight feet of um, doing 30, um, three feet. Eight feet. Yeah. Basically. Which is more than enough to get a kayak. Yeah. Or some they can't aim. We call it the Edwin Junior Bridge. <laughs> kayak or kayak. Sure. The new one underneath there. You'll be fine with that? You're a kayak person. Um, so you want me to minimize any um, pilings within that area? Yeah. So what kind of separation distance are we talking? You can go eight feet apart. Eight feet apart. Yeah. Okay. If you go six by, uh, six by six, is there? That would be yeah. adequate to draw something up. To support that. Okay. Be very similar to just a regular catwalk. Daffy, will you have like engineered plans or something that's going to? I'll have this plan revised. Yeah, it'll. We'll have an engineer stamp, or it's just going to be. It's really not a bridge, so you really. We call it a bridge, but it's not a bridge. Okay. It's not a bridge. It's a yeah, elevated catwalk. It's, they, sometimes they do them um, when you go up on a catwalk and go back down. When it's like a doom. So yeah, it would be. No, with no, I understand. I was more concerned about the spacing of the panelings being. Okay. Right out eight feet, right? I think it's about eight feet now. It's almost six feet. Yeah. Yeah. Eight. Ask the uh, person who drew the uh, plans what what their specifications would be. Okay. Yeah, we might do them six foot. On okay. Well, six foot would be. Sure. Yeah, six foot would be fine. It's more than okay. wide enough to get a kayak or a thing under it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay with that. Um, and then I had sketched in a path uh, for the hearing. I don't know that I don't have that plan right in front of me right now. Um, <coughs> that I understand I would have to go to the conservation board for approval. Or technically, I think it would just be Marty for an I administrative think it would permit. Be an administrative permit. Yeah, it's like a brown bark trail. It's pretty simple. Yeah. From the road to the beginning of the catwalk. So yeah, there's there's grass from the road to the edge of the grass. Uh, so from the edge of the gra grass, basically to the catwalk. Oh, yeah. Is there anything else? Okay. Or no? Yeah, I'm into America. We'll do the executive session. Are we good? So I think that's that's it. Okay. Thanks. I do have another application. With yes, we're holding that. Bruce. Yeah, it's actually one that two um. Mile. Yeah, it's two Seagull Hill Road. It was actually reviewed uh, in September. Uh, and part of the issue was that the Army Corps got back to me and wanted this to yeah. be an elevated situation. I don't think that the board had any issues with it otherwise, but now that there's been yeah. changes, um, we're looking for approval. Okay. This is Bruce's. Yeah, I remember this one going through it. Not the village of North Haven. We tried to fight the Army Corps, but that was a failure. Um, it's to construct a 4 by 80 foot fixed uh, dock with 60 foot open grading, uh, supported by 24 inch round pilings. Installation of a 4 by 6 ramp attached to the landward end of the new fixed dock. Installation of a Six foot by six foot platform supported by four four inch round pilings on the seaward end uh, of the new fixed dock. 
leading to a step uh, up to steps and an installation of four by three step to grade attached with the seaward end of the new fixed dock for water access. Um, we have looked at this a couple of times. Here are the pictures that go with it. Um, now this is going to be, what, what is the exact elevation of this here? Well, I'm showing it at the, I believe it's 20, 30, 30 inches from the, the vegetation. And the Army Corps wants four feet, right? Yeah. My client doesn't want four feet. Well, I mean, we have... DEC approved it as is. As it is. Three feet, right? And we, and we approved it. As well, you didn't do anything. You put it on hold. Oh, yeah, no, approve it at <laughs> no. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. Approve it at three feet? Uh-huh. Do, do the same thing as the... Approve it at three, because uh, your client wants it lower. We want it lower. Yeah. DEC I'm, wants it lower. Look at all that marsh. Yeah. It's beautiful down there. Approve it at three. I, I would the say... The village... Um, I, I will say that I do need to adjust my plan minorly because I've spoken to Scott DeBriner, who is the consultant for um, the village of North Haven, yeah. and we did do a full development plan of the lot, and we have a covenanted buffer on this, and the planning board of the village of North Haven is saying I can have no portion of this dock landward of the wetland boundary. So I'm showing a ramp right now that I have to actually shift over from, so it would actually... Shorten it? Shorten. Yeah. So, yeah. The, in other words, the the ramp would begin at the wetland, wetland boundary. And so, if it's that boundary moves, <laughs> yeah. So that, that'll that sea level rising. Yeah. Rising. yeah. Well, that my concern is that if there's flooding and they want to get out there, that it may yeah. be more difficult. But the village is telling okay. me they will not approve it. So, um, so uh, I like to move it forward at you know three feet above grade and uh, the revised plans to show the uh, shortening of the dock. Okay. Once we re receive them and then we'll put it on. I'm fine with that. Okay? Yeah, makes sense. That pending receipt of new they can put their boots on, definitely. Are, <laughs> are, are we holding it? Are we holding it pending no, receipt or? I was going to move it forward being that we're going to receive the uh, updated plans. Do we need a new cover sheet to go along Yes, with the I asked it to Send it along. Can you get also. that to me by Friday, Daphne? Uh, if not, we'll hold it until next week. The agenda by Monday. Okay, we'll, I will try. We'll move it ahead as long as we get the updated. Okay. 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 And, and revise Got it. Thank you. Thanks, Daphne. Thanks, Daphne. Yeah, yep. David Siegel, 82 Cold Spring Point, into science. Mm. Not here. I'm going to take Tim McCauley being there. Yeah, let's take Tim. Let's take Tim being there. Tim, would you west. like to come over and come up? Because uh, we have a uh, attorney that we're supposed to have an executive session at 4 o'clock, so I'm trying you to... get Rob, too. Oh, Rob, that's it. Rob Herman. Rob's here for me. Bruce has one. I have one. With um, this is hey, Tim. Also. Yes. Redwood. For the record, Timothy S. McCulley, 41 Meeting House Lane, Southampton, New York. Thank you, Mr. McCulley. I put up the roads and, um, and uh, then you came in. Pardon me? I put up the roads and, and then you came in. It's like an omen. Um, so here we are with the same situation you just discussed with Daphne. Okay. Um, this is a little outdated, the letter from uh, Aaron Davis. Okay. Um, but because you've raised everything to three feet now, am I right? So, but we're still at four feet with the Army Corps. What are you guys doing about that? Oh. Well, I swing at it, but we, yeah, we approved the, uh, I mean, she wanted us to go with what her client wants and what the, what's the uh, DEC permit stay on this one? Uh, good question. I think it's. What? Yes, they do now. That's the problem. That's where we'd be getting to our quandary here. Hang on. I, I think they come out and check. They do, Bill. 
after Sandy Day. Lots of uh, you want the money workers, engineers. I'm not sure what the current DC. This thing has been moved around so many times. I, I think we're good with the DEC, but it's the Army Corps that just won't budge on the four feet. So they they issued it at four feet, the DEC. Yeah, they will. Oh, they do. Did the DEC do three feet? I'm, I'm looking right now. I'm assuming that she's. Can you tell James? I'm looking. Ms. Erin is gone. She went to North Carolina, so she's working for the state. Assuming that they've approved it <clears throat> because she's not raising that as an issue here. We've had so many different approvals on this back and forth. Yes. This is, remember, yes. this is the dock that got too close to the property after it was already approved by you guys. Then when we came back for the renewal, it expired and then we got to start all over again. Yeah, it, then that, that's when it was found that we were too close to the yeah. property line, so everything got moved. And when we moved it to the 10 feet, that's where we ran into the problem with the with the DE scene and they approved everything with the. Uh, I'm confused. Do you have a DEC permit? Yes, I believe I do, but I I don't know. I don't want to represent to you that I do. Of course, or I don't when I don't have it in front of me. Okay. I just want to see if it's. Yeah, I'm looking to see if it was stamped. I don't see the stamp on this. I'll have to find that out. Right. But what do you guys, where do we go? Well, I believe we were approving uh, some of that four feet, correct? I wasn't here when you guys were approving <coughs> yes. the last meeting. You so, well, I like this, uh, you know, if you have the DC permit, they said 36 inches. You know, three feet, 36 inches. I would like to go with that. If not, be consistent with what the DEC yeah. because we have had yeah. multiple conversations and they had looked at our blue book years ago and basically we were going by what we were doing out here. So if you could please get that to us so I can take a look, so we can take a look at it. And if not, then we're going to have to opt to go to the uh, higher elevation. Because yeah, he's still stuck. Yeah. The Army Corps is not going to budge. He's not going to be able to do his project. Yeah, I mean that's the problem that we're having every everywhere we go. And you're um, saying the DEC would adjust? Maybe. 
we should just go. I with think the everybody board. else would play ball, but the Army Corps just refuses to do that. They won't even have correspondence. We, with we, us. yeah, we took a big swing at it. We tried. I know. You know. Do you want to move it, it forward at four feet? Yeah, I guess so. I think we should move it forward at four feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I, let me get this stuff for you. Though. I mean, otherwise we're going to. I don't want to mislead anybody. No. Here, so let me yeah, make no. sure I'm. Yeah. I'm I mean, if you right if thing. you find it and it's just yeah. thirty six inches, then let us know. Then we'll move. We can. Yeah. yeah. We can move it back to. You no. know. I mean, a lot of the clients don't want it that high. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they. We they, don't either. I know. We so never did. But. Yeah. They, all of my clients say the same thing. I don't want it that high. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for safety reasons, for other reasons. Aesthetics. Oh, it's no, aesthetics because it. You know, this happens to be on the part of the cove where you really don't see it. Yeah. But when you yeah. get out and say North Sea Harbor or something yeah. like that, you're riding down the road, the thing sticks up. Well, it's yeah. like having it over by the boathouse in Meadow Lane, a 150 foot dock that's, you know, eight feet in the air with handrails. It, it would look terrible. I. That's why we've been fighting this. All right. No, oh, I agree. I, you know. Right. Are we, we, we need a new cover sheet and new plans, Ed, then? No, that, everything's. So does that currently show at, at three feet or at four and a half feet? Four. Four feet. So then we don't need new plans. So we're yep. just advancing. Yep. Okay. Right. Awesome. But I'm going to verify everything with. Uh, yep. When you go back. Somebody else took it over in Huntington, so I'll, I'll go back. I just don't want you guys to go forward Monday with wrong okay, information. So yeah, because it's. Yeah. Should it we hold it then? Or? No. No, okay, move it forward, but yeah. Yeah. You let us know. If anything I've said here today is not correct, I'll let you know before Monday. Okay. 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 Thanks, Terry. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. I have one more for consultant, and then we're going to get to our attorney. You have a couple more. You have a couple uh, more. Any, any consultants? Bill All right. has his. Oh, Bill. Uh, right. and Rob's going to come up next. Yeah. Come on, Rob. I'm going to just wait on mine. Okay. And design's not here. Sorry, You're gonna put it on hold. Really got baseball season. Yeah. I've been in the field all day, so pardon my uh, uh, slovenly appearance. James Harris, 642 Dune Road, West Hampton. We'll figure it out once so. okay. The four-foot elevation bonanza. You know, one thing I was gonna just throw in there is that the number, like that I've been seeing when the trustees are doing, uh, the DEC is doing this, is also three and a half feet. So just adding some more color to this, they're saying, thir they're saying 42 inches to the bottom of the decking. So if you've got two inch decking, you're, you're getting pretty close to the same thing that the Corps is asking for. So the other wrinkle in all this is they're asking the distances are to different, being measured different things. Anyway. Harris is the one that we are hoping you will advance, as is with the four feet. We've been at this since last spring. Yes. Um, we tried to go back. We revised the plans, went back to the core. The core wouldn't exceed. We discussed all of this at the last work session. <coughs> and I think um, you felt that if you hadn't had an answer by now, um, that you would be agreeable to advancing the plan as uh, as currently uh, proposed, which includes the seasonal steps at the end that Ann had asked for many, many moons ago. And and that is the plan that is last dated 226.19, which is the four foot elevation over the marsh. So, actually, I mean, maybe the one safe grace of this is that. You know, we ramp up to the marsh and then ramp back down yeah. to your max distance. So it's not like from beginning to end this right. thing is four feet in the air. Yeah. It's just over the high marsh area. Right. No, I'm good. Yep. I'm okay with advancing it in a site specific manner as long as everyone else is. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. And that was Harris? Yes, it that is. Was Harris. Yes. And you got to go backwards one to get rid of me. Alara? Bruce is, Bruce Bruce is not we have, a modification. We have a modification for Iowatha LLC 1216 flying point. Modification of permit FXD 00046 to remove 4 by uh, 16 section of existing 8 by 16 pier. Uh, docking uh, platform at the end of the existing uh, 4x56 catwalk reconstruct in kind in place 
Um, is this is this a modification or my? Yeah. What what you're reading is a combination of yes. the original permit yes. plus what's different. Okay. Using four by four posts. Endless description. Yes. Untreated wood decking. Install a three by twelve ramp and a six by sixteen float supported by chocks to a minimum of two foot separation above the bottom at the end of the fixed catwalk and secure the float with four pilings. One to be located uh, relocated and one to remain in place and two eight in new eight inch pilings remove and replace in place. Uh, most of the landward 4 by 16 ramp section of the existing catwalk with a 4 by 16 level section of catwalk and construct a 4 by 65 foot landward extension of catwalk over the existing footpath using a 4 by 4 post open grading decking resulting in a 4 by 144 foot uh, fixed catwalk as depicted on project plans by uh, prepared by and consultants last dated February 19, 2019. All newly constructed sections of dock uh, to be constructed with um, constructed on uh, treated lumber. So basically, you're looking for the landward end of this dock. Yeah, I'm is... I'm going to simplify that. Okay. All of the work from the existing ramp. You show that picture, Bill. All of the work from where the existing landward ramp goes up to the end was already permitted and already done. Yes. And you can see it in those first two pictures. What we want to do, because if you look in the second two pictures, it's just a constant mud pit to get there, is we would just replace the existing landward inclined ramp with an elevated catwalk and just extend it toward the road until you get to what is basically the tidal wetland boundary and then ramp down. The good news on this one is all of this work is landward of high bay or high water, and it's not a fill application. So the Corps of Engineers actually does not have jurisdiction over the work that's being proposed. Okay. Um, so we have it proposed at three feet, and the DEC approved it at three feet. Okay. So, so basically, because of the prolonged high bay, the perimeter properties are, are basically well, getting flooded. Yes. So we're just, we're really just extending the dock. I mean, if this dock was approved, if this dock was being designed and proposed from scratch, you know, a year ago, this is the whole thing is how it would have looked. Yeah. We, we tried to avoid doing this and just worked with the seaward part, mm -hmm. which you all already reviewed and approved. How old is the main dock now? Um, the part that was just done, you mean? Or this, the old? This part. This part. It's, it's been a, you know, the, 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 the floor no, that part is this still the same catwalk that's been there for however long. The yeah. extension. So, so your wife did this part <coughs> originally. Oh, I don't know. If she did, she did it ages ago. Yeah. Okay. Like, really long time ago. Yeah, like 10 years ago, 8 years ago. But see, the key to this, and, and this is one reason why I mentioned to James to, to please put in the conditions that the new sections of catwalk will be open great. Don't say all sections because originally. That was what we put in the yeah, original and, permit. The right, new proposed. Right, and then you changed it. Right, the, the new proposed. The new proposed. Section. Right. Okay. Because this. The part in the middle is old. So this, the seaward part. So, so the seaward part here, the original permit said untreated or open grate, yes. and they went with untreated. But for this part here, we're fine with open grate. The only catch is this 40-foot section, which is to remain, yeah. is just going to remain. That's still going to be wood. So it's going to be wood from the end of the dock back to where the, the incline ramp with the new amended permit starts. Yeah. yeah, I'm not changing yeah, anything on the correct. So, so Any other reasons for that is because if we had to go in and change all that existing wood decking to open grade, they'd have to reframe the whole dock, and then we're back into this whole thing again. So, the so is this a good science uh, project to see what's the difference between wooden versus open grade? No, deck? because everything that's going to be. I, it, oh. You don't you don't have real marsh here. It's all fragmites. Yeah. All right. I tried. Didn't go anywhere. So that's the problem. All right. Okay. We're going to advance it then. Thank we're you. All right. We good on it. Yeah. No. Okay. No special conditions. No.
Okay. Now, James had me rewrite the front page to describe everything we just talked about. Okay. So Great. he was yeah. ahead of you. Good. Rob, when you get a chance, if you could send us James. Oh, I told you I would do that. That's fine. That's fine. Whenever you get a chance, just because I have it in the form of an email. So, so I was going to call oh. him up you'll have that. Okay. Could okay. Do this. Or however, Susanna got the same letter on the name. Okay. I mean, they're using stock language. Let's finish him. Let's finish his permits. Do you want to finish? All right. Thank you, Rob. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Okay. Come this far. All right. I don't know. 1177, uh, point. First Coastal. Holzer? First, first renewal? First renewal. Any changes? No, no changes. So you're advancing that, Ed? Yeah, we'll advance Advancing. it. Really? Kenneth Siegel, 81 Wheaton White? Yes. Sigil 81 Wheaton Way, uh, body of water would be uh, Meacox Bay. We're, pro we're proposing a 109 foot elevated catwalk, including the stairs and the proposed landward yeah. end of the catwalk Fire. that are 6 by 15. The catwalk is to be constructed off site and delivered in sections. 4 by 4 posts will be put in, and uh, it will be surfaced with light penetrating decking and supported by untreated posts. Look at this, James. Is it all book compliant? Um, yes. And there's no, the, the easement that they talk about on here is the owner, the property owner owns that easement. It's not a town property that he's going across. I garden. believe so. Um, I, I they supply the easement document? I'm not, I don't think it's Well, then that would have to be looked at by council. Can, you know, let's, it's not there. Let's put it on old. Um, That's got to be looked at by council, here. right? Yeah. So let's let's definitely that. let it be looked at by council. Eighty one. Because the way we're holding yeah. 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 Please. It, thank because you. Because I can tell you the history of this. We you know we've done this and went through it and and one but, was Billy's area and he could speak probably yes. very well to it and found that there was an easement through the town property in order to acquire the uh, dock being in, in water so. Let's put this on hold, and then, uh, Bill, you have one more, and then we can <coughs> go into executive session. <coughs> David Siegel, um, 82 Cold Spring Point Road, Tuckahoe. Construct a floating dock, include a 4 by 14 foot ramp, provided access to it from a plan leading to a 4 foot by 33 fixed catwalk, elevation 3 feet above grade, leading down to a four by eight ramp which leads to a six by twenty float. This is up in that creek. In Cold Springs, yeah. Mint, Dredge Canal. It's consistent with what we have with the surrounding properties, correct? Yeah. I'm placing the dock is gonna go. There's the marsh there. Do we want some language? So that that's either re, sorry, replanted or they're just going over it with open grade. Okay. So yeah, as long as it's not disturbed, no. we, and there's adequate room between the uh, the two docks to be able to yeah. turn around because you, it's, you it's, have this is right before the bridge, the bridge with the culvert underneath yeah. it. Okay, so it's, that'll be the last stop. Okay, so this property's over here. Yep. We had, we actually had it moved back and over when we first talked. Okay. So it's good then, Bill? Yeah, I'm good with this. Okay, let's advance it. Okay. 82 Cold Spring Point Road is advanced. Yep. Great. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. So now that we're done with the... Motion to go into executive motion session. Motion to go into executive session. For purposes of... Litigation. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.